Greetings comrades and welcome to the Eastern Border. And today we have a special edition since, um, well, since the beginning of the war, you have asked me a lot of questions and, uh, oh boy, since I have to verify everything that's coming out of this war right now, my head's exploding. So I just thought I'd go through and answer some of the things that you've asked me. Number one is, um, where are all the interviews with Ukrainian people? The answer to that is, well, Ukrainian people don't really want to be interviewed. Because those who want to be interviewed, they speak in Ukrainian, which I can barely understand. And uh, yeah, Ukrainian and Russian languages, because Russian I speak fluently, are vastly different. And I've included what Ukrainian people have told me in a lot of episodes here, including the one which was with with the people from Butch and everywhere else. Once I get to get more Ukrainian people, then, then I'll let you know, but um, their battle spirit's high, and everything's been pretty okay, except the fact that they are very belligerent. And you would expect that, wouldn't you? I mean, makes sense. Secondly, I'm just still trying to find a day off for myself. That was a half of the day today probably gonna be a half a day tomorrow because I just need to get get this zone out from my brain really and um, and Russian Russian propaganda have been a nice little background for everything that I do you know I play video games I play Battletech 2018 with mods I play Battletech extended specifically and I also play Europe Universalis and um, and I listen to news in the background whenever I play them. And um, today, another answer to the question is like, what the common Russians think about this war? And I'll give you the correct answer. Who gives a shit? No, seriously. Because at this point, like, so many people love this war in Russia that is insane. And it's because of the propaganda they won't ever believe you. For one, I think that they've been just told too many lies. One of the lies, by the way, is the fact that the United States and Canada and EU can't live without without uh, raw supplies. So now the very pro-Russian, pro um, pro-war party in in Russia tells them to to basically kind of cut off their um, that they should cut off their oil and everything. And the real argument that was told in the media was that. Um, Zelensky tells Europe to cut off payments and just get rid of Russian gas. Therefore, uh, th this has been fed to him, obviously, because, Ru because Europe and the US cannot uh, live without Russian gas and oil. Sorry for the thick accent, but it's just so dumb. It's like just as dumb as my accent when I put it on, really. Because the Russian pro-war people truly think that and they've been fed the information that they've been spreading information that um, we truly are 100% absolutely dependent on this and that we will uh, just just lose all of our economies and we're, we'll just go down in flames if we for some reason start buying oil from I don't know United Arab Emirates or Qatar and I know Qatar hasn't had the best rating in um in the world when it comes to human rights, but they haven't invaded anyone. And another thing that I've uh, spotted while watching Russian propaganda is the fact that they truly believe that everyone in the West is that evil. I mean, they truly think that everyone in the West is a corrupt asshole who doesn't care about anything else. And um, and if you if you're now just rooting about you know how evil capitalism is, and if you're a, a socialist person, and I know I have a lot of listeners who are leftists and socialists, and you demand your rights, and that's okay, that's okay by me. However, I just don't like the word socialist. Just use the word I don't know, so, just something else. Okay, I just don't like the word socialist. Socialists are Leninists to me and Marxists. And those things are evil ideologies. More rights for the workers, that I approve. But 
I'm pretty sure that we've figured out uh, in our society the fact that a happy worker is a productive worker and we want that. I mean, I'm a productive worker and you guys make me happy, so I guess that works. But um But yeah, now now they are now they've started to attack the the left of the west and I'm pretty sure that the few tankies who listen to this show, they'll be happy to hear that you are not true leftists because you defend the rights of minorities and gay people. Apparently, that's not socialism according to Russian socialists these days. Since, well, no true socialist would ever defend black people. Even though it's laughable since um, that was one of the very few accusations that were dropped upon the United States by the Soviet Union. And I didn't even think about the time when I would have to say this fact that, but Putin's Russia has now turned into a something even worse than, um, than the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union weren't even great people, but, well... I mean, there is this now law that uh, basically states in Russia that you can't even compare the Soviet Union to uh, to Nazi Germany. But the thing is, yeah, we don't need to anymore. We can just compare Putin's Russia. It's just crazy. And um, just what makes me tick is the fact that I, I'm starting to believe that there are a lot of people who've been actually truly brainwashed. I mean, if you think about this, they don't understand the economical consequences of what would happen if Russia would cut itself off from the world's oil supply. Or they don't they don't really care about it, maybe. But this is this is what's happening there. And even on the talk shows like the popular ones with the Soviet Union and everything, they blame the United States for everything at all. I mean I know that the United States is not a perfect country. I know that EU is by no means a perfect organization. However, I'm kind of tired with living next door to a person who can just drop nukes on me. So I've decided to basically advocate for total denuclearis- denuclearization, I think that's the right term, yeah, for, for, for Russia, because they can't be trusted. I don't trust them. And um, right now, they're also doing a lot of things militarily that just make no sense to me. So that's why I'm just cutting off the military part of of today's show. However, well, people in Azov have stated uh, their uh, Azov style, the last factory place in Mariupol, the last untaken spot in Mariupol. They have declared their own um, rules for allowing them to escape. And uh, those rules are that they'd be allowed to leave their weapons and they'd be allowed to leave to a third country, like someone that's not Russia. Which is of importance, really, because they kind of don't want to get tortured and killed. But another thing that happened was that an interesting discussion happened today with uh, some Russian opposition media. The fact is that uh, a lot of people still call me about Azov. And like I said today, is the answering questions day, and the most important question is about Azov. How can I support Nazis? Well, I'm going to give you the argument of Alexander Nevzorov. My, my mentor when it comes to podcasting and, and journalism. Of course, I have Dan Carlin too, but Alexander Nevzorov is the person that I trust the most, and he literally has them on the phone call. What I hate the most is the people who actually thought the, pa- the point when I quoted you the letter from Azov, they said, oh, it's not genuine. No, it is. It really is, because I know the guy, and uh, he calls them, and now he spreads the phone number around. Hey, at one point, uh, at one point, if if I get the phone number, even you might be able to call Azov personally. The trick is that um, it looks like this. I mean, we have we have people whom everyone calls Nazis, and who have the kind of Nazi-like symbols on their shoulders, even though Nazis just uh, took them away, and that's a whole different story. And like, Nazis were barely involved in the situation. But they're the guys who protect nations. And then you have another another guy, type of per- people who are supposedly denazifying things, who are raping women, killing children, bombing hospitals. But they don't have any Nazi symbolics on them. Except the Z, which is a Nazi symbol too. But let's even discount that part. I mean, who's the bigger Nazi in this case? Like, how how can you... How can you even think about Azov being the evil 
per portion of this when like 1.5 percent of of Ukrainian population voted for nationalists and not even Azov. Meanwhile, Marie Le Pen, who is a clear Nazi, I mean literally she is a Nazi, is about you know she's a serious contestant in in the French election. And then you're like, oh, not that kind of Nazi. Well, fuck off. Nazi's a Nazi. I hate them all. The thing is, not that kind of Nazi. I'm, what do you, what do you call Putin then? Like, I've read enough of Umberto Eco and enough of, enough of philosophy to understand how this works. And Putin is literally doing everything a Nazi leader would do. Not deeming him such is just stupidity. It's just weird. And if you think about it, it also makes sense that he's a Nazi because he's a KGB officer. And they used to be best buddies with the Nazis. <laughs> if if Nazis wouldn't have attacked the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union would have attacked them and uh, not have allied with, with the Nazis. And all this idea about calling people Nazis is just weird in general because times have changed. We live in a new era. This is what happens now, apparently. I'm not happy about it, but hey. We have to we have to accept what's what's going on. And we have to deal with it. Not gonna be easy. Sorry for the philosophy, but like I said, this is how it works. Yeah, the the average Russian really thinks that Western Europe is just as poor and corrupt as they are. They don't believe in elections. They don't believe in, in anything that's actually useful or or might be bringing some positive change in the world they i think i think they truly think that everyone in the west is just another evil person and they don't believe in people's freedoms they don't believe in fundamental freedoms they use in their arguments and the tv that i watched all day long the fact that well, obviously the West also must be falsifying all their, their elections constantly. And obviously the West must be, like, cheating. And they're just, you know, hypocrites for telling us that we're not democratic enough. They, they, they're they true believers of this idea. And I think nothing really can be done about this anymore. I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe I'm dumb. Maybe you can tell me otherwise. But this is the most important question. What to do with the Russian people? And I don't know. And I'm sad about that. Because honestly speaking, besides some denazifying operation of their own after this war ends and Russia's de denuclearified, I have no idea. We'll get back to more edited episodes soon. But uh, yeah, these were the questions that I've gotten the most. And thank you, Patreons, for, for supporting me. Uh, by the way, uh, please support us if you can. We're going back to Ukraine soon. Uh, the Eastern Border Patreon is available through patreon.com slash Eastern Border. Or just, you know, it's it's there on Twitter. You can just find it on Twitter. Follow us at Eastern Border. Eastern, just, just look up the Eastern Border Twitter. You'll, you'll find it. It's going to be fine. And we take donations too. If, if you want to help us, then you go to our homepage, the Eastern Border, all of you, and click the donate button. And donate to the Ukrainian army, but I don't know. What I, what I hate, what, what, what I would hate the most is the fact that if this war will actually, you know, sit in there for more than a year, that would be awful. People think about long-term war, but I don't know. We need we need to do our best so that this war ends, so that the deaths end, so that I can actually sleep peacefully as well in my own home. What you guys don't get sometimes is the fact that. When I say happiness is mandatory, like I do now, it, it actually means something to me. It's pretty difficult. And the thing is that, and again, this isn't scripted, and I'm stupid this time. Normally I script these things, but it's hard to actually, you know, evaluate myself, and it's hard to put myself out there. But I'm trying. And we're not perfect. And then, then we get called non-professional journalists. Yeah, we're not professional. We're not. We're trying our best. And, you know, sometimes you just don't get what you want. Do you want tales of mega precise tactics? Or do you want people's stories like this? Currently, I'm, 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 I don't know. 
I had some I have I have I have had a few rants here but this is just me being human. Hope this is good enough for you. We'll get back to military tactics tomorrow because I can't really afford myself enough episodes where I'm actually being a human being instead of a voice in the microphone. My quality assurance guy yells at me when I do these kinds of shows. Sorry about that. Then I don't know. Some of you like it, some of you don't. Just trying to be be useful to all of you. And I really care when you message me. So please do. Seriously. At any rate. До свидания, товарищ. I'll be back tomorrow. Unless I get nuked or something. And happiness is always mandatory.